and welcome to the Canadian Real Estate Channel. I'm the Godfather, Alfonso Quadra, and we're doing these lessons from the Godfather. And today we want to kind of piggyback on the last video when we're talking about net operating income. And I mentioned that we use cap rate, and cap rates are used a lot in real estate. When, you, when we talk about cap rates, this is a industry jargon, this is an industry formula. Who's gonna, who's gonna talk about cap rates? Well, your realtor may talk about cap rates, your, um, your lender, your lawyer, people in the industry. Now, if you're buying a single family home, or a duplex or a triplex, well, you probably are not gonna hear cap rates. Cap rates really um, are become uh, important when we're talking about multifamilies. I would say around four units, four, five, six and up. This is where people start talking about cap rates and the reason is because it's hard to find comparables. For example, for single family homes, you're gonna see that the way that these single family homes are evaluated, they're based on comparables, right? So you gotta go to the comps. You gotta go, you gotta go to who sold in your neighborhood that's, uh, that's similar to your property and you find comparables. Shortly after the Second World War, they came up with this formula, capitalization rates. And the reason they came up with this formula is because shortly after the Second World War, you started to see uh, a lot of different properties that were mixed use. For example, you would have industrial with uh, multifamily or commercial. And so they needed a formula to determine the value of the asset. Now, people get confused all the time. Cap rates, you know, who determines the cap rates? This is a market, right? They're not determined by anybody. It's what, what are people willing to accept as a return? So for example, in a higher density area, in a major market that's really high density, that means you have more competition and people are willing to accept less as a return. Lower cap rate. In a secondary or tertiary market where you don't have as much competition, where for the most part people are investing for cash flow, you'll see that you, you'll find properties with, that are trading at, at a higher cap rate. So density really impacts the value of properties because you have more competition. And so if you have more competition, that means People, people are buying these properties with a lower return. And so that's what it is. Net operating income determines the cap rate, the performance of the property. Now, you can go to CMHC, there's, I mean, you can Google uh, cap rates in your city. And you'll see that the, the, there's a lot of entities that publish the going cap rates in the market, but they don't set the cap rates. They're not set by anybody. They're set by the market. If people are, you know, the competition is less and people need a higher return in order to move forward with that asset, you'll start to see the cap rates will start to rise. For example, interest rates have an impact on cap rates. Higher interest rates means that people are looking for more cash flow, which means that they'll need properties that have higher cap rates in order to service more of the debt. And so it's natural in the next 10 to 12 months, as interest rates start to rise, you'll see that cap rates will also start to rise. But these are markets and it's not a, a very specific, nothing's written in stone. It's set by the market. It's set by the investors. And what are they willing to accept as a return? And so more competition, that means that it's competitive. People are willing to accept less as a return. It drives the cap rates down. 
So let's talk about uh, about the cap rate. So the cap rates derive from the net operating income. So you want to you want your annual net operating income, and you want to divide it by the cap rate. Again, you can go you can. Uh, go to go go on Google. Figure out what the cap rates. Now, once you've been doing this for a while, you'll start to notice that you know. Okay, uh, Toronto, Toronto's cap rate is you know right now things are trading at around 3.5 percent. Or let's say you go down to Hamilton, you know cap rates are around hovering around 4 percent. Or Ottawa, the cap rates are hovering around 4 percent. And so, it just gives you an idea of what how they, they, they came up with the purchase price or the asking uh, price in this, in this case. So you have an annual net operating income divided by your cap rate gives you your asset value. Very, very similar, if you take the annual net operating income and you divide it by your asset value, you get your cap rate, okay? Very simple. You can take any net operating income. You can, you can, you know, work with it. You know, get your handy dandy um, calculator. Let's say it's forty, forty thousand dollars a year in annual cap rate, in annual net operating income, and you divide it by, let's say, a five percent cap rate. That means the value of this asset is. 800,000, okay? So, I love this stuff. By the way, I failed math in school, right? So you don't have to be a ma math wizard to figure this out, okay? You just gotta do it a few, a few times, get comfortable with it, and uh, it's gonna be easy peasy for you. So, we have a, a building, a six unit building with an annual net operating income of $45,000 a year. This particular building just happens to be sitting in a, in a market where the cap rate is 5%. So, take out your calculators. I want you guys to do it right now. Do it with me. Take out your cal calculators. And what you're going to see, you're going to take 45000 and you want to divide it by 5%. And what you're going to see is 900000 right? So. That's the value of this asset, 45,000 divided by a 5% cap rate. Now let's, to, let's, let, let's just say that you brought this asset, this same asset, and you brought it to an area, a market, where the cap rates were lower. For example, let's say we went to a market where it was 3.5%. That means that the, this particular market is you know, higher density, more people, more competition. Even though the performance of this asset is the same, but the location of the asset actually impacts the value of the property. So this same property that it was worth 900000 uh, in a different market, now we bring it into a market where the cap rates are, you know, properties are trading at 3.5%. All of a sudden, 45,000 divided by 3.5, you'll see that the value of this asset is 1.2 million and change. And so, cap rates can be used to analyze deals, cap, cap rates can be used to figure out um, what the value of my property is going to be once I've improved the performance of the property. So if, if the average um, asset is trading at 4 to 5 percent, if I increase the net operating income by let's say $30,000, then you can see what the value of the property would be, what the new value of the property would be. So use cap rates, have fun, don't be scared of the math. I failed math in high school, <laughs> only if my math teacher could see me now. And so cap rates, especially when, we, when we're talking about multifamily and apartment buildings, uh, they're very important, don't be scared. And if you want more information on cap rates or any of this, make sure to reach out to me. This is the Canadian Real Estate Channel. I'm the Godfather and we'll see you next time.